Our reading this morning is in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, from verse 51. Going only to read up till verse 56. Let us pray. Lord, we ask that you will speak to us through your word. Amen. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abram's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So far the reading of the word. Throughout history, people have tried to find the truth. What is the reality of life? What is morality? What is right and what is wrong? And what makes life meaningful and purposeful? And as a result of that, there were endless philosophies and worldviews and religious views and systems over the centuries to try to teach what is truth. And mankind believe many formulas and philosophical systems. And they try to explain through all that the reality of life. And maybe they have reached the peak of that search during the Enlightenment period, the Aufklärung period where they started to reason and say that the human mind and the human reason is able to discover the very purpose of life and have all the answers to the questions of life. And that they can can solve all the problems in society by their own human reason and mind. And by that they thought maybe they could eventually create an utopia on earth. But there was no need for religion. But the optimism faded very quickly. Because in the 20th century, the two world wars, where people were slaughtered in their millions, the evil of the Holocaust, and the terrible threat of, threat of nuclear war shattered this unrealistic, idea they had of mankind, of the perfect human being, of man being able to solve their own problems. If you take God out of the system and the thought of man, there's no point of reverence anymore. There was a man, godless man, Friedrich Nietzsche, a philosopher. He denied that there was any God. He said, God is dead. But he even took his philosophy to its consequences. What will be the consequences if we believe that God is dead? And he said two things will happen. The 20th century will become the bloodiest century in history because the 19th century killed God philosophically. And universal madness will break out. If man take God out of their system and their thought and their belief. There's not much left. And oh, it's sadly, that emptiness is filled by something else. G.K. Chesterton said that the tragedy of disbelieving in God is not that a person ends up believing nothing. It's much worse. A person may end up believing 
anything. And that's the time we are living in as well. Increasingly people say, there is no truth. Pontius Pilate asked that question, what is truth? And nowadays many people <clears throat> have that same belief that we cannot say that there is any truth. And people want to throw away the shackles of biblical morality. They want to be free. They speak about freedom. We, we have our rights. We can, I want to do what I think is right. I'm my own standard of morality. But instead of finding freedom, people found themselves only more empty and enslaved by their own passions. But the Bible teaches us there is such a thing as truth. And there is absolute truth. Even though many people in the church today denies that. So the Bible clings to its own wisdom. But the, uh, the world clings to its own wisdom. But th the Bible tells us that there is a solid truth. And God himself is truth. And Jesus is truth. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And the Bible is the word of God. And we can believe that. And that's the way for believers as well. That's the way we are sanctified is through the truth of the Bible. We trust in it. We live by it. The unbelievers are described by the Bible as those deprived of truth. They've gone astray from the truth. They oppose the truth. They turn away their ears from truth. But not so the believers and the church. Paul describes the church in 1 Timothy 3 verse 15 as the pillar and the support of the truth. Now truth brings spiritual freedom. And that is the theme of Jesus in this few verses. He repeat, repeatedly stated and claimed to be the Son of God, the Messiah. He performed many miracles Yet many of the leaders rejected him and hostility increased against him. We'll see it in the next chapters to come. But there were a few who believed in him. Even if it was only maybe intellectually and not with their heart. So he was speaking to those people who, was, who were maybe thinking of believing in him. And showing them the way to freedom. And we read in verse 31. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed him. If you continue in my word. Then you are truly disciples of mine. Later we would describe the same the, the, the Jews that... They were still slaves of sin. Later on, maybe saying more about them that they were children of the devil. They had an intellectual view of Christ, but not a hard belief. And Jesus is showing them which way they have to go to have a hard belief, to be truly saved, to have saving faith in Him. And he tells them, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. If you abide in my word, you have true faith. But he tells us, and he tells everyone, that the true disciple is one who abides in his word. But loves truth. But loves his word. But finds their joy in the law of the Lord. John 14 verse 15 tells, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. They will submit themselves in their heart under the gospel, under the Bible. They will be word oriented. Acts 20 verse 32 tells us, the word of grace which is able to build them up. They become doers of the word and not only hearers of the word. 
And Jesus tells them, when you abide in my word, and when you obey it, you will know the truth. Because it's found in the Bible. You will know the truth. Because the Spirit teaches the disciples of Christ the truth. He reveals it to them. And they are sanctified by it. They love the inspired word because they know that it reproves their lives, it corrects them, it trains them in righteousness. And when that truth becomes part of you, it does something wonderful. Jesus tells us the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. How the world longs for freedom. You hear it everywhere. You hear it amongst the young people, the older people, in the radio and the television. People tell you, they want to be free. They want freedom. But the more they are looking for freedom, the more they become in bondage to their lusts and their passions. But Jesus tells us here the way to freedom. And it's a spiritual freedom. It's a real freedom. We won't easily acknowledge that we need this freedom. But the Bible tells us that man is in bondage of falsehood. He's in bondage to the devil. There's things that bind people. The devil is active. He's working in the lives of people. He's trying to... To, to bind them, to put chains around them. They have got no joy and no freedom. They think they can do as they want. But that freedom brings death. It brings bondage. The law of God <clears throat> is not there to take away our freedom. The law of God is there to care for us. We, won't, we don't only break the law of God. The law of God breaks us if we offend. So, we are under condemnation. We are under judgment. There's no freedom. There's spiritual ignorance. There's spiritual death. There's lostness in sin. And it was for that purpose that Christ came into the world. We read the wonderful words in Isaiah 61. Jesus in Luke is quoting that few verses to tell the people about his ministry. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, to recover the sight of the blind, to set free those who are oppressed. That is part of the ministry of Christ. Maybe people don't know him. They don't know why there is things in their life that are wrong. They don't know why they experience this freedom and maybe they are looking to, for more sin to commit. And the more sin they commit, the more bondage they have in their own lives. They don't know that the freedom they need is the freedom of Christ. But they are captive in their own sins and the bondage that Christ came to release the captives, to set the prisoner free. The greatest bondage every man and woman have is sin. You won't recognize that very easily. That's why in verse 33, the Jews answered him, We are offspring of Abram and have never enslaved have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will uh, become free? They insisted, not us. It's, we are not slaves. We have never been slaves. We are from Abram's generation and descendants. We have never been nationally in bondage. Maybe they lie in those words because they were taken away in captive a few times. But that's the attitude of most people. 
I don't need Christ. I don't need the Bible. I don't need the gospel because I am free. I'm not a slave to sin. But Jesus tells them, truly, truly, I say you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. You've seen these words of Jesus, Amen, Amen, truly, truly. He, and, and after that, He introduces always a very great and important statement. I tell you, maybe you are not under a government that enslaves you. But the greatest slavery is sin. If you practice sin, you are a slave to that sin. So despite their proud and self-righteous pretense of freedom, Jesus tells them, by what a man is overcome, he's enslaved to that sin. You can be free. You can have all the money you want. You, you can have all the abilities to travel ev- everywhere in the world. You think you are free. But there's one thing that will enslave you. And that's why you need the gospel of Christ. That is sin. And that is the biggest slavery. Titus 3 verse 3 tells us man is in bondage to various lusts and pleasures. Acts 8 verse 23. In the bondage of iniquity. And that's why Jesus tells them you need a relationship with God. You need a relationship with Him. And therefore, the promise of freedom He says, the slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. He's telling them in this statement, and and that was so true in those days and through today, the slave is only there for a time. A slave has only specific privileges. And one day that slave will leave at home, maybe when the years of seven years or fourteen years have passed, and there's time for release, the slave will go and put up his own home and family. But the son remains forever. In these words, there's a warning from Jesus to these people. The son has got permanent rights in their household, but the slave does not. They were saying, we are very religious. We are from Abram's descent. We are not slaves. We are in no need of freedom. In Matthew 8, Jesus warned them, I say to you, that many will come from the east and the west and recline at the table with Abram, Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the sons of the kingdom will be cast out in the outer darkness. That place there will be weeping and gnashing, gnashing of teeth. He's telling them it's only those who receive Christ as the Son of God who are truly the sons of God. Only those who belong to God through Christ who accepted Him are sons of God. And they will stay in the house forever. They are no longer slaves. They are redeemed. The devil has got no longer any hold on them. No bondage. Oh, there are so many bondages in this world. Blindness. Occultic bondages by the devil and his servants. But a Christian became a son of God. He's been released from that chains. He's a free person indeed. That's why the wonderful hymn of Charles Wesley... Can it be? He summarized it. Long my imprisoned spirit lay fast bound in sin and nature's night. When I diffused the quickening ray, I woke. The dungeon flamed with light. My chains fell off. My heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. That is the experience of a true disciple of Christ. They have heard the truth. They love the truth. They abide in the truth. They obey the truth. And that truth tells them about Christ, the one that can release them. 
and gives true freedom. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, Alva's world longs for freedom on every level of society. But you tell us in your word that those who believe in you, those who believe the truth, will be free indeed. And help us this morning. If there is anyone here that still feels the tremendous bondage of sin, the slavery of sin, the slavery of condemnation, the slavery of the devil and all his servants and his working, may they hear that you came to this world to set us free, to release the prisoners. And that those who believe in the truth will be free indeed. We ask it in your name. Amen.